Welcome to Jared Scott Outdoors. This YouTube channel is dedicated to getting our youth more involved in the outdoors. To do this, I'll be out with family and friends doing all sorts of outdoor adventures. This week I've headed out to Henry's Lake. Henry's Lake is closed to fishing after January 1st until Memorial Day weekend, but the fish are still very active, especially the cutthroat. That's because right now they've started their annual spawning run. The run doesn't go very far as they swim right into Henry's Lake spawning facility on the north shores of the lake, where they're captured and then spawned out with the help of the idol fishing game. It's actually a very interesting process that's done to ensure the famous Henry's Lake fishery has more fish for years to come. Let me show you how it all works. As I mentioned, we're at Henry's Lake to spawn out the cutthroats. However, cutthroat are used to create two kinds of fish in the lake. The first, of course, would be their cutthroat trout. Second would be for the hybrid trout, which are a cross between rainbows and cutthroats. My son Nathan and I met up with Brett High and his son Cody, as well as a few other Idaho Fishing Game employees that came to help work the fish on this Friday night. It had to be Friday night because Damon Keene had to make a seven hour drive to Montana to get the milt or sperm from the rainbows they have. As soon as he got back, we had to be ready to start the process. If everything went as planned, we'd be done and home by about 11 p.m. that night. Now the fish in the center run are those that recently swam into the spawning facility and are a mix of females and males. Tomorrow they'll come in and separate these fish by their sex. In this run was one fish that really caught our attention. Check this big cutthroat out. It's over 25 inches long and probably weighs a good six to seven pounds. It easily doubles the size of most of the cutthroat in here. The run on the right is full of the female cutthroat already separated earlier. Just because they're here doesn't necessarily mean they're ready to spawn yet. This is where they'll stage until they're ripe for spawning on another day. On the other side of the building is the run with the males. The milt or sperm from the males will be used later when they start fertilizing eggs for cutthroats and not the hybrids. The first ones will be used in just a few days, so their wait wasn't going to be too much longer. All of those that hadn't spawned out fish before were taught how to do it first, and then the race began. I say race because once you start, everything has to be done at a very specific time to make sure eggs are fertilized and made sterile. You'll understand more as we go along. First, a handful of cutthroat are put in a water bath that has a sedative in it so the fish don't fight back while they're being spawned. Once they're sedated, one fish is rinsed off so the sedative doesn't get on the eggs. Then a little pressure is given to the abdomen, which forces a few eggs out. That's just to make sure the eggs are ripe for spawning, but not overripe. As long as the eggs look good while firmly holding the fish, Chris Johnson used a needle connected to a compressor to add a little pressure to the abdomen. This air pressure makes the eggs shoot out on their own at first. Then with a little help from the volunteer holding the fish, pressure is added to the belly by hand to push out the remaining eggs and all the air. And right now they're actually air spawning, so holding, holding the fish up, inserting a needle in what's called the pelvic pocket of the fish inflating that body cavity full of air and that helps, uh, helps with the spawning process. They found that using air pressure is much easier on the fish than when they used to do it all by hand, which in the end results in less fish mortality after spawning out. There is some mortality associated with spawning and that's just normal, but uh, most of these fish do really well. They're gonna spawn a total of six females into a tub, and that's called a family. Chris is uh, taking a little ovarian fluid from those fish too. We'll, we'll cant that ovarian fluid off, and uh, we'll send that to our pathology lab in Eagle, Idaho, and they'll sample that for diseases. And uh, if it does come back positive, this uh, family of eggs will be destroyed. That doesn't happen too often. With that, the fish is spawned out and sent down a tube with running water that takes the fish right back out to the lake, where after a few minutes, the sedative wears off and the fish swims away. So those fish will be back out to the lake and they'll be uh, swimming off in probably two or three minutes. Six female cutthroat are spawned at a time. So with the first six being done, it was time for the next step, and that's fertilizing the eggs with the milt from the Montana rainbows. 
All right, we're getting ready to fertilize these cutthroat eggs. We have Rainbow Gerard milk that uh, Montana Fish and Wildlife supplied supplied for us to uh, make these hybrids. Got this from Eureka, Montana today, and we're going to fertilize these eggs uh, on precise timing. We're going to fertilize fertilize eggs, then we shock the eggs 47 minutes later. So it's this is where timing has to be done exactly, because later in the process, the fertilized eggs have to be pressurized 47 minutes and 45 seconds after fertilization. Damon has to add the milt at a specific time. They're doing each group of fish in 10 minute intervals, so that on the other end of the process, they can be doing the next part on those same 10 minute intervals. Again, it'll make sense as we go along. At 522, Damon got ready, as he needed to start at exactly 523. We fertilize. We add some water, salt water, saline solution, and that keeps the sperm active for a while longer. Stir it up a little bit, and then we let that set for about uh, two or three minutes. Most of those eggs will be fertilized in that time. Damon estimated that each group of six fish produce 15 to 20,000 eggs. That's a lot of potential fish in this little Tupperware. Now we're going to rinse the eggs off. Those eggs are all fertilized, so we'll just take fresh water, rinse the eggs real carefully. Usually takes about three or four rinses to get those eggs clean. If you see any of the white eggs, those eggs are dead. I'll try to pour off as many of those as I can now, so we won't have to do it later. There's a couple, couple white ones there. Then we'll add some iodine solution to disinfect the surface of the egg. And there. Okay, so now you've seen how they spawn the eggs and fertilize them. Now there's still one very big issue because the idle fishing game are really controlling the kinds of fish in the lake, and the lake has a very important Yellowstone cutthroat population, the last thing they want is the hybrid trout to expand too much and displace the cutthroats, or to have natural hybridization happen in the lake, messing up their pure cutthroat strain. So in order to stop this, they make sure all the hybrids are sterile. Sterilizing the now fertilized eggs is the next step. This has to be done in the hatchery, which is a couple hundred yards away in another building. So being as careful as possible, the Tupperware holding the fertilized eggs is carried to that facility. Obviously, the last thing you want to do is trip, thus spilling 20,000 fertilized eggs. So it was always a little sense of relief when you got the eggs safely to the hatchery. As time progressed and it got dark, it made us even more nervous as we transported eggs from one building to the next. First, the eggs are again rinsed off to get rid of the iodine they were bathed in for the last 40 minutes. After a couple of rinses, they are then placed in this perforated tube that keeps the eggs contained, but in fresh water. Then the tube is placed in this pressurizer. Research has found that if these eggs are pressurized at 10,000 pounds pressure for five minutes, exactly 47 minutes and 45 seconds after fertilization, it makes them a tripoly, as far as chromosomes go, and that makes them infertile. With the lid securely on, now it's a hurry up and wait thing. As you recall, the next step is done exactly 47 minutes and 45 seconds after they were fertilized. The first group or family of eggs was done so that they needed to be started at 610, as written on the lid of the box. Watching the clock with her foot on the pedal, Nancy depresses the pedal at exactly 610, which starts the compressor. It takes about 45 seconds to get to 10,000 pounds pressure, and even that 45 seconds had been accommodated for at their start time. Once to pressure, the time is noted and written down. As mentioned, the eggs have to be under this extreme pressure for five minutes, which means there's another wait. Meanwhile, Jana Hinkley rinses off the next batch of eggs in preparation for their 6.20 start time when they'll need to be pressurized. Press 
hands off. With five minutes to the second, Nancy opens the valve, thus releasing pressure and opens the tank. Now these eggs are all sterile. While Nancy gets the next batch set to pressurize when the clock hits 620, Jana takes the now sterile eggs and places them in the trays where these fertilized eggs will begin the growing process under the constant flow of fresh water. In the future, they'll be sent to another hatchery where they'll be raised in preparation for their return one day to Henry's Lake where they can grow to maturity and possibly be caught by a lucky angler three to five years down the road. These episodes can't be done without your help. You know the drill. Please make some comments, like, and subscribe. And I'll keep working on more videos.